What is up? How y'all doing out there? Thank you for pulling up to episode one of the Hawks Hoops podcast. We decided to do a podcast. Uh, you might be wondering why. It's because Hawks Hoops videos just weren't working for me. Uh, <laughs> if you've been following Hawks Hoops for a while, you know that I've had a, I guess I'll say a track record of stopping and starting. Part of that is, to be honest with y'all, editing a video takes a lot of work. Um, and a lot of the times I would have a bunch of stuff I wanted to talk about in one week. And I would feel like that's too much for one five minute video. So I would try to make a couple in my head and then I would get overwhelmed. I feel like making a couple and then it would just die down. So we're going to start with a Hawks Hoops podcast. Long form, not much editing on the video side, but hey, you can listen to it on pretty much wherever podcasts are found. So episodes are going to drop every Tuesday. They re- I'm going to record them Monday nights, drop them Tuesday morning. So you're ready for your Tuesday commute. They're ready for your Tuesday commute. We're going to talk about games that happened over the weekend, the week prior, and then maybe looking forward to some things um, coming up later that week. And just NBA in general, whatever's popping in the news, some of my opinions. The uh, podcast right now can be found. I started a YouTube channel for it if you want to watch it. Like I said, it's not going to be much on there. Maybe some instances where I may bring up some stats. You can see it. Uh, see the stats live that I'm seeing, but for the most part, it's just going to be a shot of me talking. Um, but if you're interested in that, it will be available on YouTube, uh, the Hawks Hoops podcast on YouTube, Spotify, the Hawks Hoops podcast, Google podcast, Pocket Cast is available on Anchor. Still waiting on it being available for Apple podcasts, um, working with them. They're like the, they dragging their feet with working with me, but I'll have all those links available for you. Um, either in the link in my Instagram bio or once you find the podcast in one location, you'll see the links to all the other places you can watch it, either in the YouTube description or the show notes if you're watching on um, Apple Podcasts once it's there, but it's not now. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, Like I said, thanks for pulling up to the first episode. A little nervous, so bear with me, but we're going to make it work. I want to jump right in and talk about the Utah Jazz because they're what a lot of people call the hottest team in basketball right now. They're currently sitting at 24 and 6 with the best record in the NBA. They won 20 of their last 22 games and they just lost Friday night to the Clippers. And I believe they have a game tonight. I should know that. Did they play? Have they played since Friday? Let's find out really quick. Yes, they do play tonight against the Hornets. So, I, I, anyway. So, what was making the Utah Jazz click? Are they real? Are they fake? Do we trust the Utah Jazz? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't trust the Jazz. Um, it, it, it might make me sound like a hater, but I feel like last year... We got to the last year in the year before there was a stretch where the Jazz were killing it. And we were wondering, do we trust the Jazz? Are they real? The best thing I could say about the Jazz this year that might make them look different from previous years is that Mike Conley finally looks comfortable. He finally looks like he belongs on that team. When they first got him, especially last year, he didn't seem like he fit all the way. But now they look comfortable. Now they're getting in the groove. Rudy Gobert looks good defensively. He's proving why he's so good for that team uh their wings angles and i always pronounce his name wrong bogdanovich are basically the same player but they're two players who can get buckets so a lot of times when i'm watching jazz games i'm like which one is which to be completely honest with you because they very they look very similar they have very similar games they both can shoot the three ball at a crazy high level they can both play make a little bit and then you also have donovan mitchell who's been on a tear of this season. He is one of my favorite players to watch. Uh, I feel like he gets a lot of comparisons to other players. Uh, a lot of times you'll get, you, you'll hear conversations, who you like more, Donovan or Booker? I've heard people say, who you like more, Donovan or Dame? And I'm like, it's a little unfair to Donovan Mitchell considering I think this is, is this his third, fourth season in the league? And those guys have been in the league a whole lot longer. But just the fact that people are comparing him to players of that caliber shows how good of a player he is. But, I'm saying it now. I wouldn't be surprised if we look up and they slip a little bit and end up third. I wouldn't be surprised if they even slip the fourth. It, I could be wrong, but I'm not really high on the Jazz. But I'm loving seeing how great they are playing lately. And like, like I said, they're the hottest team in basketball. They won 20 out of their last 22 games. That 
typically that's not a fluke, but something about it, I don't trust it. Something that popped up in the, um, something that had, Moving on, I want to talk about the Timberwolves firing their head coach, Ryan Saunders, after uh, Sunday night's loss. They, the news came out basically right after the game, and they decided to hire the Raptors assistant coach, Chris Finch, which I thought was a little interesting. The fact that they, you know, hired another head, hired an assistant coach from another team midseason. Uh, I feel like we don't see that that often. But honestly, I'm really surprised they didn't promote their current assistant coach, David uh, Vanterpool. And that's the reason I'm bringing this up is because I follow Dame. I follow CJ on Twitter. I'm they're big fan. I'm big fans of both of those players. I just like their game. And Dame was going off a little bit of about why they didn't hire David Vanterpool, at least promote him as the interim, give him a shot. And if you don't know who David is, he is. He formerly was the one of the assistant coaches for the Blazers from 2012 to 2019. And Dame speaks very highly of him and CJ speaks highly of him. And a lot of the players, um, Dame and CJ have both gone on record to attest some of their dominance to him, to the, his player development. And I mean, if you're the Timberwolves, in my opinion, you got nothing to lose. If he was a part of a great coaching staff, uh, if he was already a part of the great coaching staff on Portland and he's already been on your coaching staff all this time this season this season and last season why not promote him as interim usually you don't see that but I wish Chris Finch I've absolutely never heard of him to be completely honest with you I wish him the best of luck moving forward in the future next on the docket I want to talk about something that next on the docket I want to talk about something that's a little more interesting to me uh it was the talk of the town more so last week than this week I'll be honest I feel like I'm a little late getting to it but I still have something to share and something to say about it so I want to get my thoughts out there and that's the Boston Celtics so Danny Ainge went on I believe it was Boston radio uh last week or about a week and a half ago basically saying the Boston Celtics don't have what it takes to be a championship team he said this is not a championship team the current team that Basically, he himself has assembled. So if he's going to blame anybody for the team that he has on the floor, he's got to blame himself to an extent. Um, so if you don't know, the Celtics are 15 and 15 right now, sitting six in the East. And I'm basically here to, to, one, pose a question to you all, what you guys think, to think for yourself, but also what's wrong with the Celtics? And is there anything wrong with the Celtics, really, when you really break it down? So Tatum minute. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are both having great seasons. Jason Tatum's average of 26, seven rebounds, four assists on 44% from the field, 39% from three. Jalen Brown, 25 points, five rebounds, four assists, 49% field goal, 40% from three. They're almost the same player offensively. You can make the argument that Jalen Brown's a better uh, defensive player. Um, but if you ask me, they're, they're very similar players, great wings to have on your team. So what is wrong with the Celtics? Honestly, if you ask me what's wrong with the Celtics is, and it's not his fault, but a lot of the blame is falling on Kimball Walker. He's been playing a little inconsistent this season. He has missed some missed some time. He missed a lot of time in the beginning of the season, and I feel like he's slowly bouncing back, missing a game here and there, and it's causing him to be inconsistent in terms of his play. If you check his game log, it'll be a game where he drops 26 on like 45%, and then you have a game like he had on, I believe, Sunday night where he went 1 for 12 from 3 and was like seven for 20 or seven for 22 and looked absolutely horrible out there. And again, they lost to the Pelicans where they blew a crazy lead. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to put it all on Kimba. I think part of it comes down to really, he was injured. Um, but also I think another piece of that is honestly, I think the people, and I saw this on Twitter and uh, another uh, basketball content creator goes by B souls brought this up. A lot of people expected Kimba to essentially replace Kyrie for that team and be able to replace the production level that Kyrie brings, or at least that they were expecting him to bring. So I think he came in there with a lot of expectations to basically be Kyrie's replacement. And as much as I love Kimba, cardiac Kimba, as much as great as he looked in Charlotte, he's not Kyrie Irving. Let's just get that get that thought out your head. Kimba Walker is not Kyrie Irving. He never will be for not to sound harsh, but he just won't. And... I think that pressure, I'm not going to say that pressure got to him. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm saying they might have 
expected to get more out of him than he was probably able to give. So they may not have built their team around him adequately, adequately enough to be good enough to win a championship. Another glaring weakness for the Boston Celtics is that they don't have any good centers, like none. I don't like any of their centers. Tom, Tristan Thompson, I he's garbage. Not garbage, but I just I don't like him. He's he's not good. Uh, Thice is all right, and then Robin Williams off the bench is okay, but he's a little undersized. But that is a glaring weakness for them. They need a better center, and they need it fast. The trade deadline's coming up. It's right around the corner at this point. You know, it's in March. March is starts next week, <laughs> so they got to figure something out. And uh, I want to talk about a couple of solutions that I've heard for the Boston Celtics. One includes a center, one doesn't. But they got to figure something out quick. The tread deadline is around the corner. And a couple of solutions that I've heard on, you know, swirling around ESPN, NBA, Twitter is the potential of Andre Drummond and Cal Lowry. One, going to the Celtics and two, just being trade pieces in general for other teams. So I'm going to kind of switch gears and talk about uh, Drummond first um, and what his situation looks like. And could he, one, help the Celtics or two, help another team? So Drummond currently is in a very interesting situation. And Draymond Green talked about this and gave his two thoughts in a a post-game conference uh, about a week ago when the Cavs basically announced that they're not playing Drummond until they find another team to either trade him to or buy him out. But they basically told him he's no longer playing in a Cavs jersey and he just has to deal with that, which whenever teams do stuff like this or trade a player who thought they were going to you know, be there a long time, it always brings up the concept of like, we say the NBA is a business and you know we say teams can do whatever they want to do. But when players do what they want to do or when players demand a trade, it's, you know, players get blamed for not being loyal and or chasing rings and this, that, and the third. But aren't teams also chasing rings? Like, don't team, aren't teams also not really loyal to their teams? I mean, Drummond was having a good season, if you ask me. Drummond was averaging 17 points, 13 rebounds on 47%, which is a career low for him. Uh, part of that is because he was trying way too many post-ups this past season. He was trying to, this current season, he was trying to do way too many times. I would tune into a Cavs game. Don't ask me why I'm tuning into Cavs games, but I would see him posting up, trying to do post moves, drop steps, pump fakes, a whole lot of stuff that is not really in his bag like that. But it's not like Drummond's not a good player. Drummond is probably... If you ask me, the best rebounder in the league right now, he's still at least a 15. And like you see, he's a easily a 15 and 10 guy on his worst day. He's a 15 and 10 guy. But the question plays is the question that lies there is, does he fit in current NBA? He can't shoot. He can't really defend the pick and roll that well. If you switch a guard on him, that's barbecue chicken. Even if you have a big on him, like a a Jokic who can shoot, a Embiid who can shoot and stretch the floor, um, even like a Miles Turner who can shoot a little bit and, you know, stretch the floor a little bit, he can't really guard them outside the paint. He's not going to be able to keep up with faster players. So he is kind of an an antiquated, uh, a relic almost, you know, Um, he plays an old school big man game. But he also makes $28 million this year. <laughs> so he is a free agent at the end of the season. So he, they, if they try to trade him, it would be difficult to make them salaries match. I think if the Cavs do get rid of Drummond, it'll be through buyout. The Cavs will definitely have to buy him out. And if the Cavs buy him out, I can see a lot of teams then now interested in signing Drummond for a minimum. Because, like I said, he is a good center who can rebound. He can defend the paint a little bit. Don't have him in pick and roll situations. But if you need somebody who can rebound, who can get putbacks, who can finish at a paint off lobs, or if you just dump offs and stuff like that, Drummond's your guy. He's not your guy if you have to trade $28 million worth of salary to get him. But if he's your guy, if you could pick him up for like $3 million, $1 million. But will the Cavs buy him out? That's the big question. I don't see it happening. I think, unfortunately, Drummond would probably just finish out the rest of the season on the bench. It was going to suck for him because, like I said, he is a free agent next year. It's going to be hard, not hard for him to find a contract, but maybe hard for him to find a good contract next year. He'll like 
we might link up and Drummond signs a one year next year for not that much money to try to prove the player, prove the other teams he can still play. Another play, another player that's potentially on the market for the trade deadline is Kyle Lowry. If you know me, you know I low key love Kyle Lowry, big game Lowry. Kyle Lowry gets a lot of hate. He's not as flashy as the other point guards in the league. He's not as fast as the other point guards in the league. He doesn't pass as much as the other point guards in the league. His assist numbers aren't crazy. And is you can say what I'm about to say is an oxymoron. It don't make no sense. Kyle Lowry to me has just like winning DNA. He just does what it takes to try to win basketball games. He is a winner. And it sounds crazy saying that because he's never won a championship. He couldn't beat LeBron ever. I mean, let me rephrase. He has won a championship. He never did win a championship until Kawhi got there. I don't know why I said that. My brain's rattling. But he's a winner to me. Like, he just does what it takes to win. You, When you think of someone with grit and hustle, you think of Kyle Lowry taking a charge against, like, Anthony Davis barreling on the paint. Like, I, that's what the player I think of when I think of Kyle Lowry. And those are the type of players that help contribute to winning basketball. So why do I say the Raptors would likely trade Kyle Lowry? It's because, unfortunately, like I said, he's not flashy in terms of scoring and assist numbers. He does give you winning basketball, but it's turning out to look like so does Fred Van Vliet. Fred Van Vliet is having a great season this year. He's basically putting up the same numbers of Kyle Lowry this season. And the Raptors are 6-0 and when Lowry doesn't play. Um, they're, they've won the last three without him and he's just not the saying he's expendable, but it's looking like the Raptors might be able to move on and the Raptors might be able to, if they let him go, they continue to go younger by trusting in Fred Van Lee and they got Pascal, um, and they got OG and they just run with their young guys and they can still be a team that makes the playoffs. And as those young guys develop to be maybe hopefully better players, they can be think they're title contenders again if they make a couple of moves here and there because the, the last three Raptors won without him were against Milwaukee Minnesota which whatever and Philly and in Philly was a great defensive effort from the Raptors in the fourth quarter basically shut Philly down uh so I wouldn't be surprised if Kyle Lowry gets moved he is probably the better person I would say to trade for if you look into if you got to trade a lot of money to get a player, I would go for Kyle Lowry over Drummond. Kyle Lowry's owed 30 million this year. He's a free agent at the end of the season, so you gotta know he's got potential to walk on you. But if you're a team who thinks you're one really good player away from being a legit cop title contender or pushing you to the hump if you already are a title contender and you want to basically ensure your title, now granted you're gonna have to put a lot together because like I said, he's 30 million this year. So that's a lot of and salary that you got to give give up. So you probably would end up sacrificing some depth. But Kyle Lowry is a good player if he stays healthy. Injury hasn't been crazy f- with him this season, but they have played six games without him. But if you ask me, the player that every team should be looking for, especially if you need a center, is Nikola Vucevic. Nikola Vucevic is one of our favorite centers in the league. He is, if you ask a hoop head, he's not underrated. But even to most hoop heads, he might fall into underrated category because I promise you, I probably have not watched a Magic game all season. It's been games when some of my favorite teams are playing the Magic and I'll be like, I'm not watching that because I don't want to watch the Magic. Like, I'd rather watch a good game and I'll switch over to something else. But Vucevic is having a career season. He's currently averaging 24 points, 11 rebounds, three and a half assists on 48% field goal, 40% from three. Mind you, he's making two and a half threes a game, people. He's actually stretching the floor. He's out there. These ain't no fluke 40%. He's taking threes. And he's shooting 83% from the free throw line. He's having a great season. He's owed $26 million this year, and he's still under contract for two more years after this season. So he's an unrestricted free agent in 2023. And I think the Magic, if you present the Magic with the right trade package, you could likely get Nikola Vucevic before the trade deadline. Granted, the Magic don't necessarily have to trade him. Like, yes, they are 12th in the East. They're 12 and 18. They're, you know, not really probably going to be in the play-in tournament. I don't see them making it up to the 10th seed to get the play-in tournament. But the reason I say you're going to have to make a good trade for him is because, one, he's already under contract. And, two, I really think the Magic believe in their young core. 
they before Marco Foltz uh, went down with his torn ACL, the Magic looked good. They were six and two to start the season. Granted, a lot of those wins were against some trash teams. You know, they were against Miami before Miami started really putting it together. They beat Washington twice. They split with OKC. They won one. They lost one. Lost against Philly, and they beat Cleveland twice. But a sign of a solid team that's on the rise is you win against teams you should beat. You beat the teams you should beat. They should have beat Cleveland twice. They did. They should have beat Washington twice. They did. They split with OKC because both of those teams are kind of very similar teams in my mind. The teams that if you're trying to become better, you got to beat the teams who you're supposed to be on your schedule. And honestly, that win against Miami early in the season was pretty surprising because a lot of people saw Miami coming in, coming into the season, and a lot of people saw Miami being um, better than they proved to be. Some injuries have really set them back right now. I think they'll come back, but I don't know who's going to make a move for Vucevic. I think he would be great on the Celtics. That's the, and personally, we were talking about the Celtics and what they could do to make their team better. What would make them better is a trade for Nikola Vucevic. That's the, trade they have to do granted i don't know what that trade package looks like one money wise and two it's got to just be more than money because if the money matches up and it's trash players the magic like i said don't have to do it if they believe markel folks is going to come back healthy they're at least a play-in team next year at least if not an actual playoff team i think the celtics would the celtics have some young players and they have their draft picks, so they could make something happen. They just Danny Ainge just has to decide if that's the direction he wants to go. And it, but it's not that far out of the realm of possibilities, especially considering Danny Ainge is already going on record saying this team doesn't have it, have enough to win. One of the last things I want to talk about before we get up out of here is the All Star starters dropped last week, last Tuesday. And as you're listening to this Tuesday morning, the reserves dropped tonight. So keep a lookout on that. We'll likely talk about that on next week's episode. So the East starters Kyrie Irving, Bradley Beal, Kevin Durant, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Joel Embiid. West starters Luka Doncic, Steph Curry, LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, Nikola Jokic. And I saw I, there's always, you know, everyone always thinks there's a snub when it comes to the all stars every year. And since they released the starters first, everyone talked about the snubs that were in the starters, which now I got some opinions on it. But let me just say to start the starters don't really matter. If you're an all star, you're an all star. I guarantee you, you can't even tell me who the 2016 All-Star starters were. Like, no one cares. When it comes down to your resume, when you're trying to make the Hall of Fame, it just says how many times you were an All-Star. It doesn't say how many times you were a All-Star starter. But that being said, a lot of people were up in arms over the fact that James Harden did not make the Eastern Conference All-Star starters. We all know James Harden is going to make the All-Star team. That's neither here nor there. So let's not talk about that. They were talking about the fact that he couldn't be, he wasn't a starter. And a lot of people felt that he should have started over Bradley Beal. And this is my thoughts. Bradley Beal is having a great season. The Wizards are absolutely trash. Excuse me. So with that in mind, and knowing that James Harden essentially mailed in his season, the beginning of the first couple of weeks of the season when he was still with the, the Rockets, forced his way out of there, uh, Granted, he pretty much hit the ground running once he got to Brooklyn, but I think the fact that he hadn't been in Brooklyn the whole season, he only got there in January, and the way he started his season with the Rockets, it just, I think people didn't want to vote him in. He he wasn't really, he, he, just, he just wasn't getting in on that. And I think a lot of the league really went into fans and uh, players and, and the media really wanted to reward Bradley. I didn't get a chance to look up the the breakdown of fan vote versus player vote and media vote when it came to Bradley Beal and James Harden. But I know me as a fan, I wanted Bradley Beal to start. I Because also in the back of my head, I know that when it comes to reserves, the coaches pick those if you didn't know. And a lot of time the coaches reward winning and the Wizards aren't winning, so I wouldn't have been surprised. It would have been an egregious snub, but I would not have been surprised if Bradley Beal wasn't voted in by the fans and media and players if he didn't make an all-star team altogether because the Wizards are absolutely horrible. And then out West, the big conversation was, should Luka Doncic have gotten the start over Damian Lillard? And in my opinion, no, he shouldn't have. Dame is having an amazing season. 
the going into the season, honestly, I had the Trailblazers as a low key title contender, um, especially how the season was starting. I was loving this the fact that they were going to have their big man back healthy, uh, and then the fact how the season was starting and that low key, if you wasn't really paying, if you just looked at the box score, you couldn't tell the difference between Dame and CJ. They were putting up basically identical numbers. They looked how they looked like how uh, Tatum and Brown look for the Celtics. Basically identical numbers. But in my opinion, the Blazers had a better overall team. But then they got injured. Their big man got injured again. Um, CJ's out right now with a uh, ankle sprain, I believe. Uh, he went down in January. But the reason I'm saying Dame should have got the nod to start is because now the Blazers haven't won every game. They ain't, you know, went crazy. But Considering where they were and who they are, Dame is keeping them in the fifth seed. They're currently 18 and 11, and he's going crazy. If they're winning a game, it's because Damian Lillard. He is leading in most of the clutch stats. Dame is low key. <laughs> and this might have to go down. I might have to do a segment called Hawks Takes instead of Hot Takes. It's a Hawk Take. Dame is low key making an MVP um, push. Will he win it? Probably not. But he's making an MVP top push, and he's having that type of season. And to me, he deserved a nod. But like I said, at the end of the day, does it matter? No. Will it probably make Dame play even better? Knowing him, yes. He's the type of player. He loves a chip on the shoulder. And if he uses it for fuel to make himself a better player, I'm all here for it. But that's all I have for you guys for this first episode of the Hawks Hoops podcast. Once again, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, next episode might be a little bit longer. Uh, now that I got a feel for my pacing and a little bit as I get better, I might start to include more to talk about as we move on. Uh, I didn't want to make too much on my notes for this first episode and then look up and then I'm talking for an hour and a half. So I'll try to condense it to some things I really, really wanted to talk about, especially over the last week. Uh, and then moving forward, it'll probably be a little bit longer. We'll include a couple more topics. But thank you so much for watching or listening, depending on uh, what platform you're listening to. If you made it this far, I really appreciate you for checking me out. Uh, if you're watching this video on YouTube, leave a like. Would really appreciate it. Subscribe to that new channel. Uh, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, once it's there, leave a five-star and a review if you enjoy the podcast. If you have a question or a comment, you want to send in a question or what my opinion on something, you can actually send in the email to hawkshoopspodcast at gmail.com. Once again, that is Hawks Hoops podcast at gmail.com and then once again thank you so much for watching or listening and rocking with your boy and we will see you or i will see you next week peace